UFC Vegas 51 weigh and recap show full card predictions and the betting breakdown main event high stakes between Vicente Luque and Bilal Muhammad in their rematch pretty decent card overall looking forward to talking about it here after the weigh-ins we'll check out each fighter on the scales and look at the face-offs as well make sure you guys smash that like button if you're new to the channel subscribe Turn those post notifications on and share the video as well. And let's jump into these UFC post weigh-in predictions. First fight of the night, Eletong Heli versus Kevin Kroom. A big concern earlier on in the week was the weight cut for Kevin Kroom. Being a guy 5'11", he's definitely extremely tall for the bantamweight class, and he hadn't made this weight cut since 2014. He did make weight here. We checked him out on the scales earlier on in the week. I was on the Eletong Heli side. Let's see how they look here. There is Kevin Kroom who looks kind of chaotic. He looks a little bit scary on the scales, to be honest, man. He's giving me a little bit of a, a Joker vibe there. I mean, it could just be the angle of the pick, but I, I don't know. It's just, it's just a strange vibe he's throwing out. Kevin Kroom looking uh, a bit psychotic there. And there is Eletong Heli, calm, cool, and collected as always. Then there is the face-off. You see Kroom, obviously the taller of the two. Even though he made the weight, it's still a concern for me. How good will he perform, you know, cutting an extra 10 pounds off? I mean, he came in at 36, but still a lot of extra weight. I'm going to still ride with Eletong Heli. I believe he could surprise us with a bit of wrestling, but this is really not an easy matchup against Kevin Kroom. I guess we're a little bit banking on Kroom, the weight cut being a factor that makes him a more depleted fighter. I think that he might gas a bit faster. I think there'll be less strength in the clinch positions. I believe there is some muscle loss when dropping a weight class like that, especially as tall as he is. I think Elatong will have success if he chooses to wrestle. He has the abilities, but he ends up falling in love with the hands. Kroom is a pretty good kickboxer and a guy that's long, has a reach edge here. It's a factor. Elatong should look to close distance as soon as possible. Wrestle. I think he's going to struggle with Kroom a bit on the outside. I think second and third round, Eletong Heli probably steals. And I like Eletong via decision. As far as the betting side of things on this one, Eletong minus 165, Kroom plus 155. I don't hate a Kevin Kroom dog play at all. This is not one of those strong confidence, absolutely Eletong. It's just the weight cut really does concern me regardless of him making weight or not. I need to see him at 135 in this decade. He did it in 2014. That's eight years ago. I don't know. The body tends not to respond as you creep up in those 30s to the weight cuts as well. Um, I do think we could go a little bit long here. Over one and a half is extremely likely at minus 275. Over two and a half possible minus 160. Let's see, Eletong via decision. I don't like this prop. It's plus 180, best value. Realistically, not loving the bet on Eletong, but I do understand people want to jump on that Kroom dog side, and I definitely don't hate it. I think there's more value there because it's a pretty competitive matchup. I would say my confidence range is, I don't know, I'm going to throw a number out there, 55% of Eletong to 45 of Kroom. I want to see how he performs. If we get full capability Kevin Kroom, I think he is a problem for Eletong Heli, and this fight goes distance, and I think think either guy could take it on the decision but i will ride with eletong for the win on a hard-fought decision but the bet has to be towards crew man you know fight day we'll see how i'm feeling maybe i'll decide to throw a little something on uh kevin crew as an underdog but still riding with eletong to win a hard-fought decision here too many unknowns Next fight, Sam Hughes versus Estela Nunes. I really like Estela Nunes a lot in this spot. I'm predicting her to win earlier on in the week. I've been on her. We checked him out on the scales. The scales is not something that I really feel is going to have a significant impact on this one. Both girls on weight, looking in pretty good shape. There's the face off there. A little bit taller is Estela Nunes by not all that much, even though she's listed at an inch shorter. We'll double check that. She looks to be the taller girl. From range, Nunes is definitely the superior kickboxer. I feel like her stand-up game is going to be on display here. She's pretty top-notch with her striking. Sam Hughes is a pretty decent MMA kickboxer. She likes to stand up. Uh, she closes distance fairly well as that like modified high guard tie style. Um, she has good hooks inside. I, I see at moments, you know, hitability with straight shots down the line as Sam Hughes looks to enter. Her grappling game 
probably in pure jujitsu is going to be better than Estela Nunez, but how is her wrestling? And, and I don't think she has a significant wrestling threat that she's going to bring in. Nunez needs to defend takedowns. If she can keep the fight on the feet, she's going to win this bout. Concern is the grappling. Ariane Karanelosi in the last one took her down, submitted her. I believe she has a submission loss three fights prior. Lost to Angela Lee by submission over in one championship. Not a bad defeat. Sam Hughes on a three-fight losing streak here in the UFC. So it's do or die for her. Expect her to bring everything she has. Um, and I think Estela Nunes edges her out by a unanimous decision here in a pretty competitive matchup. But the striking will still favor the Nunes side. Minus 210 for Estela Nunes. Sam Hughes plus 195. As far as the prop, I think we're going longer here. I think fight goes distance. Minus 250 is very likely. Nunez wins by a decision is going to be my pick. Plus 105. Bet online has it at minus 140. It's really not great action if you're betting the Estela Nunez side. If somehow you're on Sam Hughes and you attacked Hughes by submission, plus 900. I mean, it's Nunez. His biggest weakness in her game is going to be when she's on the floor. Uh, Nunez to lose by sub is plus 900. For Hughes to win by decision, uh, plus 300 plus 290 i'm still picking estella nunez i like her to win a very competitive fight i think she gets it done with the stand-up live betting spot for me i'd want to sit and see how this fight's going in the first round and try to get a, a an early read of it because if nunez can stop takedowns early i really think this fight's going in her favor because she has fantastic striking technique it's just can she stop the takedown i'm gonna bank on yes estella nunez by decision Next fight, Trey Ogden versus Jordan Levitt. Earlier on in the week, I was on the Ogden side. It's a very tricky matchup because Jordan Levitt is super dangerous on the ground. Ogden, known as a very dangerous guy on the ground. Concern is that submission loss there. He's been submitted throughout his career a few times. Though he's known as a very good grappler himself and gets a lot of submissions. As far as the scales go, let's check them out. There is Trey Ogden, and then there is the Monkey King, Jordan Levitt. And there's the face-off. I think Ogden definitely is a superior striker. How's the takedown defense going to be? Can Ogden stop continuous threats from Jordan Levitt? That's a tricky proposition. Still leaning the Ogden side. If it's on the feet, I think there is a chance that Ogden could even hurt Jordan Levitt. On the mat, Jordan Levitt, I think, has a legitimate submission threat here. So I look at it like this. The money line, I won't be touching on Ogden at minus 138 best value. Levitt plus 135. But... It's just a prop that when Jordan Levitt fights, you really should consider playing. Levitt to win by a sub is plus 350 best value. You can find it at plus 325. I feel like it's worth a touch. And for me, regardless of how I'm feeling, because I do think Ogden definitely has a chance in this fight, and I'm kind of leaning that Ogden by decision side, I think that Jordan Levitt by sub has fantastic value. If you're looking for a value like Hail Mary prop, Levitt wins by sub. But I like Trey Ogden to get the W. I do think the striking's the difference maker, and I believe he'll be able to compete enough on the floor and get back up to the feet and outstrike Jordan Levitt. Clearly the better striker. Um, just some question marks will arise on the mat, and we're going to find out a lot here. I'll go Ogden for the win by decision. Next fight of the night, Chris Barnett versus Martin Boudet. Boudet is a very large heavyweight. Chris Barnett is a very wide heavyweight. I mean, he's large, but he's not large in the same way as Boudet. Five foot nine, six foot four. Earlier on in the week, Amon Boudet is a very confident pick this week. There is Martin Boudet on the scales. And then there is Chris Barnett with the front double bicep flex with his signature chaos, man. Like, I don't know. He's a fan favorite guy. He has been for years. I've heard of him years before his UFC debut. Size difference obviously really favors Boudet. Barnett is an extremely tough guy to fight, especially guys on the regional circuit. But when you come up and you fight a heavyweight that's like really trying to aspire to top contention, I think Martin Boudet dominates this matchup. I think he might put Chris Barnett against the cage and beat him up. I think he'll eventually get him to the floor. I think Martin Boudet wins by TKO. I like the second or third round, and I do think it's probably ground and pound. Barnett's best chance awkward attacks kind of his chaotic striking style he's got to use it here um, and, and land something to really surprise the Boudet side Burnett plus 205 Boudet minus 220 I do like Boudet to win by KO let's look at that prop here Boudet by KO TKO is sitting at minus 110 best value is plus 105 so that line's definitely been touched um, I do think under two and a half, minus 350, minus 320, that's likely. Under one and a half is riskier because I could still see it entering the third round. 
I'm going to go towards the side of fight starts round two, maybe, if you're looking for a, a risky prop that could cash, minus 125. But I like Martin Boudet money line to win the fight. He's an extremely confident pick in a very bad matchup for Chris the Beast Boy Barnett. Let's get to the next fight of the night. Hafa Garcia versus Jesse Ronson. Fight is at 155 pounds. I know it was listed on Tapology earlier on in the week at 170. Uh, had some confusion amongst the community, but we got it nailed down. It's 155. Jesse Ronson definitely doesn't do maybe as well at 55. I mean, at 70, he looked fantastic against Nicholas Dalby. That was a one-time thing. He did pop for steroids after that, but steroid he was using isn't something that's like super concerning to me. It's not really great for performance benefit. Jesse Ronson was the pick earlier on in the week. Let's check them out on the scales. There is Ronson. He looks lean in shape and ready to go. There is Huffa Garcia. Looks intense. And there's the face-off. I feel like I still think Jesse Ronson has a pretty good chance here. Even at 155, my concern is this. Huffa Garcia is a younger guy. He's coming off a win. He's definitely building that UFC confidence Jesse Ronson, he didn't look bad on the scales. He looked pretty lean and ready to rock. But at 55, I don't think he performs as well. I mean, he's got two losses over in uh, PFL. But besides, I mean, he came over to the UFC and then beat Dalby. And if you dig back earlier on in his record, he had a hard UFC run uh, in 2013. Prezeres, Trinaldo, and Kevin Lee loses all those fights by split decision. What that should tell you, though, is we're dealing with a guy that is a pretty skilled martial artist. Uh, it's just, unfortunately, timing and then struggling over in PFL. I still think Jesse Ronson is the better stand-up game. He's a longer guy than Hafa Garcia, and Garcia doesn't bring like a significant wrestling threat here. The record of Garcia, 13-2, and two, it looks really good, and it makes you want to jump at him, especially at plus money. Value of Garcia sitting at plus 110. Ronson, minus 105. It's hard for me to say I, I'd want to bet on this fight. I don't. I'm going to pick the Jesse Ronson side to win by a decision, but I really don't like it. I do think fight going distance here, minus 150, is pretty likely. Garcia more successful normally in his decisions. Garcia by decision, plus 200. Ronson by decision, plus 175, upwards of plus 250. I'm going to go Ronson on a decision. I expect him to outstrike Huffa Garcia, but I think it's a fight where the rounds are going to be competitive and it definitely could be pretty damn close here. Fun matchup, um, and I'm on the Ronson side by minimal amounts. I mean, just a smidge. It's it's a coin flip matchup there. Next fight of the night, Drakkar Close versus Brandon Jenkins. This right here is interesting as hell because the lines are crazy. Earlier on in the week, I was on Drakkar Close. Let's look at the odds. Close, minus 525. Jenkins, plus 520. That's insane to me. Close is coming off a neck injury that he suffered in the pre-fight shove that he took from Jeremy Stevens. He came in overweight, but then he got an extra hour and he made the 156 mark, but it looked like he had a hard time on the scales. Brandon Jenkins is the taller guy of the two. Look to be bigger. Let's check out the uh, face-offs here and the weigh-ins. There's Jenkins. There is Jakar Close, who had a hard time making weight. And there's the face-off. It's not a matchup that I think should be minus 500 towards close. So I'll tell you straight out, if you're on the betting side, there's plus 500 money on Brandon Jenkins. That's where you go. I'm not touching Drakkar Close. That being said, I do think Drakkar Close should win a decision or even get a TKO potentially here. I think he's a kind of hard matchup for Jenkins, a guy that does take a fair bit of damage. Uh, close, a guy that's willing to engage in the brawl, and that's something that could be concerning. Uh, Brandon Jenkins, a, a tall southpaw, pretty decent straights from range, but I still think Drakkar Close has a better overall game, um, and I think if he doesn't let you know that craziness come out like we saw against Dariush where he got caught, I think he could have a lot of success in this fight and might even knock Brandon Jenkins out. Concerned about the neck injury for sure, but I'm still going to expect Drakkar Close at near his best, and I think that Drakkar Close can beat Brandon Jenkins. Now, as far as uh, the props for the odds here, because the money line is extremely wide, if you're on Jenkins, you're betting the hell out of him because that value is fantastic, and honestly, at plus 520, the guy's got a legitimate chance. Jenkins to win, Close, 
Guy that gets a little bit reckless, is it impossible that Brandon Jenkins gets a knockout? Definitely not. So we'll look at the Brandon Jenkins by KO side, plus 800, plus 1100. Close to win a decision is more what I'm feeling. It's plus 135, plus 160. Over one and a half, minus 210, minus 170, best value. I think over one and a half has a fair shot of cashing. I do think we're going at least to the second or third here. I'm going to go the close side. He's known for winning decisions, but he's a guy that's down to bang. Um, and I like him over Brandon Jenkins in his comeback fight. But odds are crazy in that bout. And they make you want to jump on the dog bet side. Lena Landsberg versus Penny Kianzad 2. The rematch between these ladies. They fought many years ago early in their careers. Landsberg, 40 years of age now, takes on Kianzad, who honestly is on a bit of a roll. I mean, lost to Raquel Pennington in the last one, but that's a very forgivable loss. Earlier on the week was on the Kianzad side. Let's check them out in the scales. There's Penny, front double bicep, little action from Alina Landsberg. And then there's the face-off. I think Penny Kianzad's striking is a big difference maker here. I think she's a lot better with her punching. Uh, Landsberg, okay with the hands, decent kicks. I think that Kianzad dangerous inside of the clinch. Good elbows, good knees. She's a girl that strikes extremely well, and I don't see her as a grapple-deficient fighter. I mean, I think she has pretty solid takedown defense for the most part. I'm um, obviously losing that fight against Raquel Pennington. She got controlled a little bit in the clinch, but she put up a fight there where Raquel kind of shines. And I think Penny Kianzad is going to beat Lana La Lena Landsberg again the second time they fought. And I think she's going to win a unanimous decision in this fight, outstriking her, maybe even taking her down and getting some top positioning. Uh, as far as the odds, ugly. Here, minus 400 for Kianzad Landsberg, plus 365. I like that Penny Kianzad side to win. Um, as far as bets, ugly one to bet. Kianzad to win a decision, minus 185, minus 155. It's an ugly bet, guys. Extremely wide line, but Kianzad should definitely win. Potential parlay piece here with Penny. Next fight of the night is our featured prelim. It's an extremely interesting one at heavyweight. It's Devin Clark versus William Knight. Earlier on in the week, the pick is Devin Clark, but we have to look at William Knight. He looks like a different human being. He weighed in 251 pounds. William Knight filled out. He looks huge. Devin Clark looks similar to what he normally does without the weight cut. Knight is a lot bigger of a man. I'm very concerned about the health of Devin Clark here. He's not a bad fighter, though. I mean, he has pretty damn good wrestling, and that's why earlier on in the week I was on the Clark side. I mean, he's got wins over Menfield. I mean, the Townsend win ain't great. I don't think, I don't think that it's an easy fight for either men. I think this is a really tricky matchup. Knight has the power advantage for sure. I want to see him at 250. I also think at 250, he could lose some mobility and potentially gas sooner, which actually plays better into the Devin Clark game, a guy that does have a decent stamina. Uh, man, and I do really feel like the wrestling factor is still going to be live, especially second and third round. I'm going to lean the Devin Clark side to win, but I don't like it. I don't want to flip-flop on you. It's just too many unknowns. What we saw from William Knight last time wasn't great work against Maxim Grisham. Granted, that was a very odd stylistic matchup. This one here is one that he could have some success in. And I mean, if he gets on top, he could land some ferocious ground and pound. I do think he could get a knockout. As far as the line, Devin Clark minus 163, Knight plus 160. Um, with William Knight, whenever he fights, doesn't matter what side the pick is on. You go Knight by KO. It's the plus money, plus 350. I think you have to touch that line. William Knight looked huge, man. And he definitely has a knockout shot, but he also could gas out and be really slow. So, so many unknowns. Very weird card overall, and this is a very strange matchup, and we're going to find out on fight night. I'll go Devin Clark by a decision, but the bet is William Knight by KO. If you're looking for that plus money, it's definitely the way to go for the value side of betting. Let's jump to the main card. If you guys haven't yet, make sure to smash the hell out of that like button and subscribe if you're new. Munir Lazez versus Angelusa. Interesting matchup here that Lusa takes on very short notice. Earlier on in the week, pick became the Lazez side. I really do like his kickboxing game. He's a really good guy from distance. Extremely slick, extremely quick. Ang is a, a pretty decent stand-up fighter as well. Pretty athletic dude. Uh, looks for takedowns from the clinch and does use his strength to get a lot of those takedowns. He's a strong guy. I think that Lazez's takedown defense is going to be there. I think he's going to outstrike Ang Lusa standing up. 
And I mean, Lusa just recently fought, uh, and that was against John Howard. He won a decision. I don't see him having near that type of success against Munir Lazez. I think Lazez shines in this matchup, and I think he lets his hands fly beautifully. And I think that you're going to see Lazez with a unanimous decision win. Now, as far as the scales, Lusa looked in incredible shape. There is Lazez. He looked pretty good as well. You see that range difference, the height. I don't see enough power on the Lusa side to be a substantial threat to Munir Lazez or the grappling chops to really beat him up there. I see Lazez defending takedowns and outstriking Ang Lusa, using his range and winning this bout on the scorecards. Odds, Lazez minus 195, even at minus 188 best value, Lusa plus 180. I'm going to go with the Lazez side to win as far as props on this one. Lazez wins via decision, plus 140 best value. I think we are going the over, over 2.5, minus 180. But it is risky with strikers. I do think there's a chance Lazez could catch on Lusa and stop him too. Uh, but Lusa is a pretty known-to-be durable guy. I mean, he's never been finished as a professional. Um, and I think Lazez is probably en route to winning a unanimous decision over the short notice on Lusa. Next fight on this main card. Pat Sabatini versus TJ Laramie. Fight here in the featherweight division. I think Pat Sabatini's a problem. He's looked fantastic so far in his UFC run. Last fight, win over Tucker Lutz. Prior to that, Jamal Emmers, quick win, Tristan Connolly. Um, and then it's outside of the UFC action. So 3-0 and in the UFC takes on TJ Laramie, who's 0-1 in the UFC. Lost his bout against Derek Minner, was quickly subbed. TJ Laramie is a pretty good wrestler, though. Earlier on in the week, the pick is Pat Sabatini. Let's check them out on the scales here. There is TJ Laramie. There is Pat Sabatini. I think Pat Sabatini is going to be too much for Laramie. I think just overall, he's got the more well-rounded game. Laramie's a good athlete, and he can start pretty fast. He's strong on top. He's got good takedowns, but I think Sabatini's submission threat is going to be real. I think the takedown defense for Sabatini and even mixing in his own offense. In striking, I think Sabatini can actually have some success against TJ Laramie. I like Pat Sabatini to win by submission, and I am picking the second round. Um, as far as the line, Sabatini is way wide of a favorite. Minus four. 10 best value Laramie plus 420 I think maybe Sabatini wins by submission would be the only thing to touch if you're on the Sabatini side here plus 160 Sabatini by sub I do like it I think there's a pretty good chance that it happens um and I am on Pat Sabatini to win fairly confidently here I think he can beat TJ Laramie but the odds are hideous um and I mean more high-level experience, better fight IQ. I think Pat Sabatini's game matches up well with TJ. And I think we're going to go Sabatini by submission with uh, some strong confidence here. But the line is an ugly line. I mean, it's a confident line, you could say, but ugly, ugly bet. Myra Bueno Silva versus Wu Yanan. Earlier on in the week, I was on the Bueno Silva side. Let's check them out on the scales here. There is uh, Wu Yanan. There is Bueno Silva. And then there is the face-off. I think Myro Bueno Silva should win this bout. I won't be surprised when she mixes in some takedowns and has a bit of success from the top position. Um, I do think her Muay Thai matches up pretty well with uh, Wu Yanan's kickboxing style, which is a lot of upper body and hand movement. Um, and she is pretty quick on her feet, but I think Bueno Silva finds a way to catch her. I think she'll find a way inside and maybe land takedowns. I could see a submission here by Bueno Silva, to be honest with you. Um, and I like Bueno Silva to win. As far as the lines, Bueno Silva minus 465. Yanan Wu, plus 420. Let's see. Bueno Silva, win via submission. That value is plus 265. As far as the money line, it's minus 465. That is an ugly bet. Definitely could see win by decision for Myro Bueno Silva as well. Uh, but the value side would be propping it up. But it's it's not like a huge chance. But Bueno Silva by decision, minus 110. If you're going for a prop, you need a bet on this fight. It's plus 265. Bueno Silva by sub. Um, I think that's one that could be worth a light stab in a bit more of a possible Hail Mary type situation. Uh, I like her to beat Wu Yinan though for sure here. Confident pick. Next fight is our featured bout of the night. Andre Fialho versus Miguel Biesa. Very fun matchup of strikers. And earlier on in the week, I was on the underdog Fialho side. We checked him out on the scales. There is Andre Fialho. There is Miguel Biesa. And then there's the face-off. Fialho looks good and ready to rock. 
I think Fiala's going to hurt Baeza in this fight, man. is a guy that's been stunned numerous times, even through wins. You look at W over Matt Brown, he was hurt. Uh, Santiago Ponzinibbio, good war with him. Chaos Williams knocked him out. He's taken some damage in recent fights. I like Andre Fialo's stand-up game a lot. He's a developing guy that has a good amount of experience at this point. Pressure style striker. Bieza definitely has the edge with the kicks. I think Fialo's superior with the hands. Who will control the distance of this fight will probably win. It's in the small cage. I think Fialo will find success backing Bieza up. And I think he is going to land some good combinations with the punches. And I think he can hurt Miguel Bieza with the hands, man. Bieza should definitely look to keep that distance, work those kicks. If it gets into the grappling, I think it is fairly competitive here. Um, and I'm going to pick the Andre Fialo side. I like him potentially by a decision, but I wouldn't be shocked if he was able to find the chin of Bieza either in a back and forth fight. Either way, I'm kind of thinking this might be the fight of the night. As far as the lines here, Andre Fialo to win by a decision plus 550. Over one and a half, minus 180. I do think we're going over one and a half. That's a pretty decent line. If you want the plus money, Fialo plus 154 as an underdog against uh, tough Miguel Bieza. Very fun matchup here as the featured bout. And I actually might be most looking forward to this fight on the card. At least top three. I mean, the big three are the top three ultimately. And this next one is a fight to get excited about. It's our co-main event. Cayo Barajo versus Gadzi Omar Gadzi of prospects being thrown up against one another. The prospect battle here. Gadzi Omar Gadzi is a hell of a wrestler. Cayo Barajo kind of Wonder boy esh karate style, but has a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt and is dangerous on the floor. Godzi Omar Godziev is a guy that when he gets on top of you, he's extremely hard to keep off. It's the small cage. I think there's a good chance that Godzi does land takedowns in this small cage. I think he does find top control here. I think he could land numerous takedowns and even takedowns that are stuffed. I think he's still going to be pressing against the cage. Expect chain wrestling. Earlier on in the week, I'm on Godzi, um, and the face-off is here. There is Godzi looking like Godzi does. There is his opponent, Paraiho, looking pretty lean, pretty cool, pretty ready to rock with the shades. Then there is the face-off. I'm going Godzi, Omar Godzi, have to win a decision, guys. I think that definitely it's bad for both of these guys. You know, loss is going to happen on either side, and they're both prospects with bright futures in the sport. Young guys, Godzi 29, as is Paraiho at middleweight. That's a good age. These guys are just entering their primes. They're not even entered yet. Excited for the future for both of them. I am going Godzi, Omar Godzi. Have very close money about pickums here. We're going minus 110 for Godzi. Uh, you can find Brajo upwards of plus 115. I think we're going a bit longer here. Over one and a half, minus 210 is pretty confident. I do think over two and a half at minus 120, minus 110 is also pretty likely. Uh, when I look at the prop for Godziev wins by decision, I don't hate it. Plus 235. I mean, if shit, if you can find that plus 6,000, they're saying that it's at sports bet. It's probably a miss mark. But hey, if you can find that, touch that line because that's definitely a possible outcome of this bout. And I am going to predict that it happens here. I'm going Godzi Omar Godzi of win via decision over Cayo Barajo. And our main event of the evening, make sure you guys smash the like button and subscribe. It's Vicente Luque versus Bilal. Remember the name Muhammad. Good matchup here in the rematch, the second bout between these two. Vicente Luque is a dangerous striker and a guy that does a lot of damage in his fights. He's a finisher. Bilal Muhammad is a guy that controls you for long periods of time and wins dominant decisions for the most part. Bilal was caught badly and hurt in that first fight with Vicente Luque. It was just excellent work. I was looking at the knockout again and I mean, blocked a shot from Bilal as Bilal was entering and Bilal was way square. The stand-up difference is, is clear. Bilal Muhammad has very good wrestling, but the striking... Favors Luke by a long shot. It's can Luke keep the fight on the feet? Is he going to be taken down? I will suspect that Bilal Muhammad, at the very least, lands a couple of takedowns. How dominant can he be from the top? Vicente Luque training with that championship level um, you know, of Gilbert Burns, training with elite-level wrestler Logan Storley. I think Vicente Luque is going to be really prepared for the wrestling game, and he knows the threat from Bilal. It's a 25-foot octagon, so it does a little bit favor the grappler here, but Vicente Luque can do damage in very small spaces. He's not a guy that just needs the whole cage to let his game unfold very dangerous submission threat i think vicente luque is going to stop below by knockout again though i'm thinking third round ko vicente luque to beat below tricky matchup for sure 
I think that Bilal could have some success in the wrestling, and we're going to see live how this fight's playing out, and maybe there will be a, a live bet potentially being placed. But I really do like the Vicente Luque side. He's a more dangerous fighter. Bilal needs the full 25. I think Vicente Luque will start having some success, especially with the stand-up, and I feel like he'll be able to grapple with Bilal better than Bilal will be expecting. Now, as far as the scales, we'll check them out. There's Bilal Muhammad looking jacked and shredded, ready to rock. There is Vicente Luque looking in very good shape. And then there is the face-off between these two. Luque also knocked Bilal badly unconscious in their first bout. And there's got to be a mental effect that that has. Minus 160, Luque, plus 165 for Bilal. I like Vicente Luque for the win. And I am going to say Vicente Luque wins via KO. Value of that is plus 250. People definitely are going to be on that Luque sub side. You can find it upwards of plus 690, but it's more around the plus 300, plus 350 range. Luque inside distance, best value, plus 110. Let's look at the overs here. Over two and a half. I think you're getting a little riskier. Three and a half. I think we're going the under, under four and a half, minus 135. If we're going the full five, I lean it towards Bilal getting a decision win. But I think Vicente Luque is going to do some serious damage here. And I think he's sleeping Bilal Muhammad for a second time. Overall, this UFC fight night card is pretty decent. Let me send you guys off with a parlay here. Uh, we don't have access to best fight odds right now. I guess their website's down. So we'll just pull up fight odds and I'll tell you guys out the gate. The parlay that I'm really liking if we're looking at UFC only is Martin Boudet. And I like him with Munir Lazez for plus 110. You want to add a little juice to the sales. You could add in somebody like Kianzad and the value is going to jump a fair amount. I think two, three fighter parlays max with like the fairly confident picks if you want like the deep side uh betting breakdown you can check out this week's best mma bets and i got the um timestamp there for the parlays that i went through and the parlays haven't changed the picks are the same from that time so definitely if you got to look back and you want to check like a deep parlay look that's definitely the video to do uh, because definitely we went into some great ones there i think sabatini could be a, a good play if you're looking for a D the dog fialo on the line and i even think godzi omar godzi of if you wanted to go Godzi Omar, Godziev, Lezez, and Martin Boudet. I like that three-fighter play. It's about plus 300 value. So pretty interesting one. Overall, the card, as I said, decent action. Uh, looking forward to watching it go down, though. Will probably not be live for the card, unfortunately. I'll keep you updated through the channel. Uh, we'll be at a boxing event with the family for most of the day. So we'll see what time I get back. Either way, I think it's going to be a great night of fights. Make sure to smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Turn those post notifications on and share the video as well. Much love, my people. And I will see you all in the next one. Peace, guys.